All right, so welcome back. We're in Module 4, working with customers and jobs, and we're now in Section 2, and we're going to talk about how to create estimates for those customers. Now, when we left off, we had actually created a new customer named Tom Allen, and we had a kitchen remodel job for that customer. So let's go ahead and flip over to our home screen. And on your home screen, you're going to see this estimate icon right here. Now, keep this in mind. If in the Easy Step interview you told QuickBooks that you do not use the estimates, you will not see this, and that's fine. Even if you do have it here and you don't want to use it, you don't have to. You can actually start directly with the Create Invoices. Estimates and purchase orders on this level are considered non-posting, and that's because if you create an estimate and the customer never calls you to do the work, then it doesn't really fit into any of your profit loss or any of your reports like that. You'd have to run special estimate reports to see any information on estimates. All right, so let's go ahead and click on estimates. Now the first thing it asks us for is to put in our customer and our job. Now I can do this a couple of ways. I can pull the arrow down and pick Tom Allen's kitchen remodel this way. Or I can start typing the last few characters of Tom's last name and it'll pop up in the list like this. So either way is going to be fine. Now let's say this. I've got a brand new job for this customer. I want to create a sunroom, an estimate for a sunroom. Notice that's not on my list. So I want to show you how to add a customer or a job right from here so you don't have to get out of this, go to the customer center, set it up, come back, way too much work. So what I'm going to do is right after the customer's name, I'm going to put a colon, and then I'm going to type in the name of the new job, which in this case is Sunroom. No space. And notice you type it exactly like it says here, customer colon job. Now as soon as I'm finished, I'm going to hit the tab or the enter key, and it's going to say Sunroom is not in the customer list, and it asks me if I want to quick add it or set it up. Probably if it's a job, you just want to quick add it so it'll be in the list. But if it was a brand new customer, you would go to the setup and then fill in all the information about the customer. So I'm going to quick add this one, and now let's see if it's on the list. And there it is. Now remember this. Anytime in QuickBooks you're creating a transaction, if you're using the job feature, always, always, always choose the job. Don't click just the main customer. And the reason is because if you want reports to be accurate, you need to know which job everything went to. Or the other thing that will happen is you might be on a report and see something under Tom Allen that says other, and you'll go, what is that? So always, always, always pick the job. Now the next field over is the class field. Now we had talked a little bit earlier about the fact that when you want to take your company as a whole and break it into smaller sections for reporting purposes, you can use the class feature. And you see they have new construction, remodel, and overhead. Now you don't have to use it, but if you do, it's a very nice feature. Okay, next thing over is what we call the templates. Now you have the ability to choose different templates per estimate. So one of the things we're going to do in a later module is talk a little bit about how to create templates or to edit them. Because there's going to be things you want to change, like you may not call this an estimate, you may call it a quote. Or maybe there's a field you need that's not here, or maybe you want to rearrange some fields. All that's done when you're actually working with the templates. Now there's a place for the date, so you'll see it pulled in today's date, but you can change that to any date that you like. And also there's a place for the estimate number. Now in QuickBooks, any transaction that would have a number will start with 1. So you'd want to change this to whatever number you wanted, and the next estimate will continue that sequence. Now here's the name and address where you typed it in your setup. So what if you happen to be here and you want to change this address? Or I notice I have a capital A and a small a there. I can change it right here, and what's going to happen is, as soon as I save and close this, it's going to pop up with a message and ask me if I'd like to save my changes to the customer's information. And you'll want to say yes there. Now there's also a ship to field, so if you happen to send invoices or estimates to one address and you ship things to another, you can fill that in. But if you don't need that, you don't have to use it. That is something you could take off when you're customizing the template. 
Now, let me just point out something. See this arrow where it says show history? If I click on that, it's going to open up the right side of this window. And this will just give me information on this customer and this job, like the open balance if there was one. If there's any active estimates, I would see those listed. Recent transactions. But since I don't have any of that right now, I'm going to click the arrow and hide the history. Now let's come down here where the items are, and you have to click down here to see this drop down list. Now items are things that you sell your customer, and sometimes you purchase items as well. These are items that were added for the practice file, and you're going to see the items can be different types. There's sometimes you have items that are services you provide, sometimes they're actual inventory you want to track, sometimes they're what we call non-inventory. You can just kind of see the different types. So when we actually go through later and set up our inventory items and we actually work with the items themselves, you'll see how all this comes into play. So for now, let's say I'm going to pick framing. Notice it brought in a description automatically, and I can edit that description as often as I like. I can put in a, whatever information I want, and it will word wrap and take up as many lines as I need. Now I'm going to put in the quantity, and let's say there's 10 of these. Notice it pulled in the cost of 55, so if I want as a one-time thing to charge 50, I can put 50 on this list, and it will do the calculation for me. Now I'll skip to this unit of measurement. Let me tell you real quick what that is. If you have a particular item that you sell by the foot, by the yard, by the case, then you may want to go ahead and set that up as a unit of measurement so when you click the down arrow you can choose it from the list. Now over to the markup column. You can mark an item up a dollar amount or a percentage, either one. Let's mark this up 30%. Notice I have to put the percent sign or it doesn't know that. And when I tap through it, it will calculate it for me. Now this last column here where it says tax, that just means for sales tax purposes, this item is not taxable. Now I'm going to go down to the next line and add one more here. Now this time I'm going to put in a wood door. I know they have some exterior wood doors. And I want to say there's two of these. And I want you to notice this. Notice the markup here. It assumed a markup for me, and that's because when you're creating items, if you have filled in the field that says, on average, what do you buy this for? And on average, what do you sell it for? It'll assume the markup for you. You just type right over that if you want. And I just want to mention, if you drop the list down, that you're going to see these different price levels that we talked about when we were actually setting up our customer. So I'm going to type right over that. I'm just going to put $500. Notice I don't need the dollar sign, just the period at the end, 500.00, and it will calculate for me. And you can see this is a taxable item for sales tax purposes. Now at the bottom you have a place to put a customer message. So also this is the sales tax item that you would be charging your customer. That's how it knows to charge him 7.75%. Here you'll see the subtotal, the markup, and then you see the amount of the tax and the total at the bottom. So that's how you go ahead and just set up the, the main part of this estimate. So let's talk a little bit about some of the things that we see on our icon bar up above the estimate. So notice there's different tabs here. There's main, formatting, send, ship, and reports. And most of the things that you're going to use most of the time are going to be under the main tab. Now the first thing you'll notice is find. Now if you happen to be looking for a particular estimate and you can't find it for some reason, you can either hit find or use the arrows. The arrows go to the next or previous estimate. And keep this in mind that QuickBooks has everything in date order. So you may think it was the previous one you entered, but if you had backdated it for some reason it wouldn't be. So just kind of know that. I could also click find and search through my estimates for a customer or job, a date, I can look for an estimate number or an amount if I knew those particular things. So I'm going to cancel this over on the right. Remember this does not find everything in QuickBooks, it's only looking through the estimates. Here is a way I could create a new blank estimate, and here's also a way to save it. Now if you're working on this and it's taking you a while, then you want to save it frequently so you don't lose your work. 
Notice you can just save it, or you can also save it as a PDF. Here's how you would delete this estimate. Here's a way to create a copy. So if you need another estimate just like this one, just make a copy of it and then change whatever you need to change. Now let me just mention Memorize because we do have another module where we're going to talk about that later. But if you have estimates that you need to do on a regular basis and maybe they occur at the same time every month, for example, you can memorize this one so you don't have to type it every single month. You can also mark something as inactive. Now, QuickBooks will keep a record of those inactive estimates, but they're not really going to be used for reporting purposes. So that's when you use that if you just want to have it there in case you want to look it up for some reason. Now I want to talk about print real quick. Let's preview this one. So this is what the estimate is going to look like currently. Notice if I click on it, I'll zoom in. And I don't see a couple of things. I don't see the item name and I don't see the markup. Customers will not see those, so you can actually name your items anything you'd like. You probably will want to edit this and that's where modifying your template is going to come in that we're going to talk about in a later module. So I'm going to click close and a couple more things under printing. Notice that I can go ahead and print the estimate from here. I could print an envelope which actually is going to do a mail merge with Microsoft Word and pull it up or notice I can save this as a PDF. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and stop the video right here and I want to continue talking about these items that are on our icon bar. So let's go over to the next part of this particular section. Hi, I'm Molly. Thanks for watching. If you would like to see similar videos, click the subscribe button on the right. I'll see you next week with additional videos.